Okay. Horsepower versus torque. How it applies to you in real life and an explanation without a bunch of technical jargon and trying to dumb down the technical jargon. I'm going to go way below that. I, we're shooting for the ground on what my definition and how I think you'll more effectively understand it. Um, so I'm going to give you easy to easy clean explanation and then I'm going to give you a little trick to compare bikes and their engines and their actual power so torque and horsepower are the power to a bike um, those are the two power figures you're looking at and this will hopefully help you really become more efficient and hopefully happy with your next bike purchase whether it be your first second third fourth whatever um, because the the numbers there are it's a it's a very relevant figure and it's something that you kind of come to subconsciously when you have been around bikes for a long time but i've never seen anyone explicitly state it um and it's definitely not something that is an intuitive thing to try and come up with when you're new or newer uh so hopefully that will help as well now back to our absolute brain dead foolproof explanation Torque, how powerful the bike is under 5,000 RPM. Horsepower, how powerful is the bike above 5,000 RPM. That's it. Any of the technical jargon, any of the, you know, things that you have read, and typically you'll see a lot of people that try and translate from a diesel truck versus a V8 truck, um, and people in the comments that will go spout whatever their salesman told them and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and bikes, it's different. And all you really need to know is that torque is how powerful the bike feels under 5,000 RPM. And horsepower is how powerful that bike feels above 5,000 RPM. Now, of course, this is such a frustratingly simple explanation. It's going to make you mad to hear because you're going to have 50 examples off the top of your head of where that's not entirely the case. As a whole, as an average, that is an extremely fair assessment. That is going to get you a better understanding of almost every bike immediately looking at it on paper. And this will lead me to my next point, which is what is the relationship between the two? So torque, how fast it feels below 5,000 RPM. So if I, you know, give the throttle a little jerk, how much does it kind of rip out from under me is going to be torque, 5,000 RPM below. Horsepower, if I'm in 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 RPM and I'm twitchy with the throttle, how does it feel? The ratio between torque and horsepower is what is relevant when bike shopping. One figure is not better than the other. And this is something that both camps, sport bikes and cruisers, do a horrible job of falling into, is looking only at cruiser guys, look only at the torque, and sport bike guys only look at the horsepower. And this is something that is I guess kind of the the yin to the yang and you know these guys do this these guys do whatever you know there's they're you're both on death machines but you both hate each other and argue about blah 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 so it's just a weird little differentiation between those two right there anyway um but uh before i go off on a ramble in there that relationship between horsepower and torque is extremely crucial and is going to give you a beautiful explanation and idea of the power curve and how a bike is going to feel. So remember, 5,000 and below torque. So if we're looking at bikes, what is that torque figure? And what is that percentage? So we're gonna take horsepower, this is above 5,000 RPM, and we're gonna put it over torque, and we're gonna divide the two. We divide it, and we're going to come out with a number. And check out this extremely high quality editing I've done right here. Um, let me check my camera. I was a little proud here. So this is, um, this should have been done in Excel. This should have been done more efficiently in about 30 different ways. Um, but here I am on some stuff I printed off of Google Sheets. 
because my black ink is dead and Excel is stupid. So, our ratios, right? On the left is our horsepower, on the right is our torque. So for our 1000cc super sport bikes, 280, and these are, that's my general figure, 2.5. And now let's go to the, the torquey bikes when people think of torquey bikes. And that's gonna be the road glide and the street glide. 105 horsepower over 130 torque is 0.8 on our little scale. Street glide is 86 over 8, 109. I am 99% sure that's not accurate these days. I don't know why it's so hard to find figures on some bikes, so please forgive me for any wrong numbers here. Um, and I, again, I'm sorry, some of these are going to be dyno numbers, some of these are going to be claimed numbers, claimed numbers. I did my best. Um, anyway, 0.78. So, below one is going to be your massive V-twin torquey cruiser bike. Above two is going to be your exponential growth in speed inline four v4 super sport bikes so our 600 cc is an average of about 120 over 47 2.55 1100 cc the v4 so aprilia v4 uh, rsv4 and the ducati 210 over 90 2.33 that's going to be pretty pretty standard here now that we got our our are high and low here um, these this percentage that you're gonna take is going to tell you where in this line your bike feels where that power band is going to sit and help you better narrow down what kind of bike you're looking for so let's say right now you have a ninja 400 let's go take and check it out look at that right there we have the ninja 400 on my little list 49 over 28 that puts us at a 1.75 that is going to be much closer towards the sport bike feel than it is the torquey cruiser feel i think the ninja 400 is a 10 out of 10 bike i think the 300 is a 10 out of 10 bike the 500 have it ridden gonna bet it's a 10 out of 10 bike um kawasaki knows how to make beginner bikes but Let's go look at the Ninja. That's a 1.4, the 650, excuse me. That's a 1.42, 67 over 47. This 1.4, 1.5 on my little beautiful ratio chart here is going to be about exactly where I think the majority of people believe nakeds to, naked bikes and P-twins specifically to be sitting. So if we go look at our MT-07, we have 74 over 50, 1.48. So with that in mind, your, let, let me back up, sorry. One and below, the closer, anything one, our scale, we'll say the scale is 0.8 to 2.5. 0.8, to one and the closer you are to one let's just say closer you are to one the more torquey and more v-twin harley cruiser that bike is going to feel it is going to have a power band and it is going to have the most oomph low in the band and it is going to it let's say 2000 rpm to about 4000 rpm is where most of them start to kind of feel like they're they're choking on themselves um it's going to pull like a mule and it's going to it's going to pull hard and then past 4000 rpm anything that's around that one or below uh mark on my little ratio here it's going to start to feel real breathy because it doesn't have the horsepower and breathy in regard to bikes is something that is it it's a word that doesn't make sense until you sit on one and it's going to make the most sense you've ever it, it there won't be a doubt in your mind with the word breathy but essentially it feels like your bike is running out of breath like you no matter how much you move that throttle it can't get the air it needs to get up and go um so our gold wing 0.96 rebel 1100 1.19 everything's within the fury 0.74 here's our cruisers 
Um, but, and here's my, here's a unique little example here. If this wind in my gloves didn't suck so much. Um, excuse me. Here we go. We are going to go look at my favorite Harley ever made, the V-Rod Night Rod. 122 over 85. That comes to 1.44. Think about how much more similar that is to that MT-07, to that Ninja 650. And then if we go down here and we look around some more, the Scout Bobber, 1.4. The Indian FTR, 1.41. These are bikes that I never, without sitting down and doing this, would have kind of compared uh, just because they're so different in ergonomics and, you know, just the class of bike in general. And the FTR, I just forget exists uh, for whatever reason. Um, but after making my little list here, it just immediately kind of reaffirmed my beliefs on the the relevance of this ratio uh so that sportster the new sportsters the v-rods the bobber and the ftr all feel like massive p twins and by p twins i mean the p twins these bikes all feel like for uh i won't say that they feel like more expensive mt07s their engine does um it's a very, very, very similar feel. Same with an Ninja 650. So let's say you're shopping and you love your MT-07, right? Absolutely love your MT-07. And let me go back here. So you absolutely love your MT-07. Best thing you've ever owned. You just, the feel of that bike, everything on it, you just love that engine. So it comes out to a 1.48, right? 75 over 40. What bike do you shop for next? Should you look for the MT-09 and MT-010? Should you go down that path that so many do and then end up disappointed within one or the other? Um, and if you look here, MT-09 is gonna be more on the sportier side than the R7 in terms of the way that engine feels. The MT-10 is going to be significantly more sporty feeling and it's going to have a significantly longer, more powerful and exponential growth in its power band, which will make it feel completely, completely different than that MT-07. It's kind of a shame that, in, that Yamaha has these kind of tiered in a way that people think they're stepping stones and they're just identical yet that much faster than the other. When, if you've ridden all three, they, none of them feel even remotely similar. If your eyes were closed, I don't think anyone would ever be able to guess that they are three bikes that share, you know, a very similar name. Um, so, you love your MT-07. You want something faster though. What do you look for? Well, Indian FTR is 1.41 1 with 123 over 87. Indian FTR is an extremely underrated bike and, and having made this list and remembering that the FTR exists, it feels very much, very much like a faster, more capable MT-07. Um, and that's something that I don't think anyone who's in the MT07, the majority of MT07 buyers anyway, are never going to go pull up Indian's website and look that up. Um, or they'll, you know, they'll scroll by it and say, oh, that looks neat, but I bet it's a cruiser or whatever. Without really paying too much attention to the figures. Um, so yeah, this is an extremely, extremely useful little, uh, I lost one little way to compare bikes and get you a feel for what's what so i made this list um on a drive back from a wedding so i had nothing but time and you know, whatever so i made it a little longer than i needed for the intents of this video but um I'll copy and paste my little list of random bikes I pulled up um, to, you know, in my description here, just for you to kind of compare and look at. Um, but yeah, that ratio, I believe, is the best way to window shop for bikes. And if you're trying to compare A to B, 
look at those two numbers look at what that one's ratio is and then compare it to what you're shopping for to see if you are going to be in a completely different class or not because that does happen a lot um especially with the naked bikes the engine variance is so massive and the ge the gearing variance is so massive across that that field that you are and it's very very easy to not understand what those figures in relation mean um and end up with a bike that you absolutely hate you know trading something in that you love hoping to get something faster that felt similar and then absolutely hating it um and then i lost my paper uh i gotta, I gotta go catch those it's windy out here um but yeah think of it, it it's a very simple little ratio anything 0.8 is it really just let's say one to 2.5 anything that's one or one is the torquey cruiser easy to ride has the most oof low and it has a breathy feel past that 1.5 is your middle of the road that's your p twins these are your bikes that have the flattest power curve so it's just going to have that same kind of punch no matter what your rev range is and then the farther past that 1.5 you kind of deviate from the more sporty and feel it's going to become um and the more it's going to rev out and rev out and wind up um rather than punch you like the kind of mid mid weights go um i will give a little note there this is not an exactly perfect formula a lot of these bikes will kind of surprise you but a lot of these things like I never would have compared a V-Rod to a uh, MT-07. It's like a souped-up MT-07 and the way that that engine responds. And be damned, it's a genius, a genius comparison. Um, so, hopefully, anyway, this will... That will help you do some online shopping. And seriously, torque under 5,000 RPM. How much oof does it have horsepower above 5000 rpm how much oof does it have it's the simplest way to look at it um and it, it really will don't get too caught up in the numbers as well on paper um so like this bike's 100 horsepower so it definitely feels faster than this bike that's 90 horsepower not true uh there's a lot that goes into the actual speed and feel of a bike suspension and throttle are the actual throttle reaction are extremely important but that will help you narrow things down that will help you look for things more similar to what you may love or you know let's say you're riding that 1.5 right now with your ninja 650 and you want something more towards a cruiser but you want to keep those same ergos or naked ergos run down a list and see what is going to be the most similar and that's going to be I, off the top of my head the bmw 1250 boxer uh the boxer engine so like an r 1250 um and then on the opposite end of that let's say you know you love your your ninja 650 but you want something a little sportier and you have a you know you, you want to try a naked but you don't want to get too far from it the ktms are all much more they're not too sporty they all have that serious punch to them but they do wind out a little more than say that ninja 650 so uh yeah hopefully this wonderfully high definition um and uh high class production on the horsepower and torque will help you with your shopping uh again any questions i always i do my absolute best to answer everything um and thanks again for watching, and I hope this helps someone.